Hello, welcome back. So I want to talk about the derivative, which is pretty much one of the big characteristics of and importance of calculus. Derivative is describing the rate of change at a specific point. So, and I also want to do a little bit of a proof into it. So let's 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 see what the derivative is. So let's do this. If we have a graph, and let's call it x and y, and we wanted to find, using this graph, so this is graph can be f of x, let's say that we have a point here and a point here on our graph, and we wanted to find the rate of change between these two points, but we have to kind of know the derivative to do that. It's kind of like the, it's kind of like the slope, what you did in this uh, in algebra, in algebra, you had to find the slope to find the rate of change and how much it was going. But really, the calculus is taking that a little step further. So let's call this guy here x1. And let's call this guy over here. So to get from this x1 to this x, just say x2, we want to kind of move a little bit. We want to move h over. So, and h represents a movement. So this point is going to be, well, x1 plus h, really, because you're moving some h over to a different location. So this is an h, by the way. Well, what's the output of x1? Well, that's just going to be um, f of x1, because you have f of x. Well, what's the function of this one? Well, this is going to be an output of x plus 1 h. So now, according to the rate of change, or you can call it the slope formula, well the slope is really the what? Difference of y's over the difference of x's. So difference of y's over difference of x's. Correct? Dif so if we take these two, uh, these two points and use this slope formula, we can kind of come up with a rate of change, which is known as the, der as the derivative. So let's do this. So let's say that we have we have two points here. And these two points are f of x1 um, and, um, sorry, x1, these two points. And we have this point here, x1 plus h. And we have f of x1 plus h. So we have these two points. So we're going to take these two points and put them into here. So let's see. X, well, y2 is this guy. So which is x1 plus h minus y1. And then we're going to say x2, which is x1 plus h minus x1. So then on the top, we are just going to have x plus 1 plus h minus f of x. And on the bottom, you see how the x's cancel out, and we're just left with h. So this is called the derivative formula. But we need one other aspect of this, which is called a limit. And we want to say, well, what, if, what happens when the limit approaches at a 0? Well, remember. When we have a, H or a, a, zero, a zero in the denominator, it's called undefined. So we can't do that. So when, we're, when we take a, for, a, a function and we apply this formula to it, this formula to it, we want to make sure that we kind of get h out of the denominator to not make it zero. So that's kind of like the goal to it. So let's do one of these. And um, let's see, so using this formula here. So let's use this formula, and let's make a, and let's do an easy one, and let's call, let's take the derivative of x squared, which is a parabola going upward. It's a parabola going up at 0, 0. So we're going to take this, and we're going to apply this formula. So here we go. If we go let h go to 0 of this function here, 1 plus h minus x, 
H. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna take this X plus H and we're gonna stick it into where X is. So here we go. We're gonna stick it where X goes. So X plus H goes in for X, goes right here for X. So we're gonna take X plus H and then we're gonna call it squared. So we're taking X to this, we're putting it in that because that's our input. Now we want to make sure we subtract our function, which is this guy right here. So we're gonna subtract X squared because that's what it calls for. And then what happens, the denominator is just gonna be H. Okay, so now let's go ahead and say, well, remember, don't, for, don't forget your limit. So then we're gonna go like this and we have to expand this. So we have to expand this to a binomial. So let's do this. So we have X squared plus what? 2X H plus X uh, H squared. We expanded that. Men minus H or minus X squared over that. So then we're looking at this and we're looking at our part here and we're saying, well, Hmm, what can we do now? Well, this and this goes away because they're opposites. And we have 2x h plus 8 squared over h. So if we take this idea and says, well, we have an h here and an h squared here. Hey, I can take out a nice h. So remember, we want the limit as h approaches 0 of h we take an H out, and what do we have left over, which is 2X plus H over H. So now if we come back over here, we can say, hey, look at that. Two factors cancel out. The H's go away. So now we're okay to put in zero. But you should write this like this first. And then you can say as H approaches zero, which is just going to be zero, your derivative of this is 2x. This right here is your rate of is your rate of change. So 2x is that. So let's take this idea and graph this real quick. So let's do a graph. And this is going to be what c. Here's one, you put one in, you get one out. You put two in, you get four out. And you get a basic parabola going like this. But it says that 2x, well, what is 2x? 2x is a slope, a positive. So what if we wanted to say, well, what if we plug in x equals two? Well, what if we plug x equals two, what is that gonna be? That's gonna be two times two is four. So you're gonna say at this point, the graph or the slope is four. So that's a pretty good, pretty good slope. So what happens if we keep going towards zero? Well, pretty soon we keep going towards zero, what happens to our slope? It's gonna get smaller, smaller, and smaller, and less and less and less until it reaches zero. And then what happens at zero? Well, if you put in x equals zero, you have zero. So you have a horizontal slope, which is pretty much no slope. So that's kind of what the derivative is. It's just really a telling you the rate of change at a certain location. And if this is complicated for you, because this, this uh, function can be more complicated. And using, this def using the definition that we derive of the derivative has a lot to do with it. So what I really want you to understand and take away from this, and I hope this all helps, is that when you take the limit as h approaches zero of this function, be very careful when you have x plus h, put that in to the whole thing first, and then subtract the function later. 
And what I mean by that, and I do a couple more videos on this to help you out a little bit. Well, what if I had x to the third plus 2x plus 4? Be very careful of plugging this, x plus h, into this and this, and then subtract the whole function. So I will do some more videos like this later. Um, I hope this helped a little bit because derivatives is really important to, to get the foundation of them into calculus because calculus has to do with that rate of change again. So I hope this helped. Please subscribe, and I hope that you had a good time with this. All right, thank you.